video on this channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Lillian and I like to talk about books. I wanted to make a video today to tell you about the books that I'm planning to read for nonfiction November. Nonfiction is definitely a genre that I would really like to dedicate more time and effort to reading. Half of the overflowing bookcases behind me are nonfiction. I've just found in the last several years that reading outside of schoolwork and research has definitely had me going for more fiction reads, more escapism, and I would like to make it a priority to shift back to having a larger focus on nonfiction because I do really enjoy it and I'm hoping that this readathon will help me do that. The first four books on this list I am going to be reading in tandem with the Skoden readathon that is also happening in November. It's a readathon hosted by Kim the Native Lady Book Warrior on YouTube and on Instagram and it is featuring Indigenous authors for the month of November. If you're interested to see what I'll be reading for that readathon, I will link that video in the cards on whatever side of the screen that is. The next four books are ones that feature Indigenous topics, however, they are not authored by Indigenous writers. But nonetheless, I still wanted to read them in tandem with some of the ones that I was reading for the Skoden readathon to help expand my knowledge and understanding overall. The first book is one whose title definitely grabbed me when I was in the bookstore, and that is In Whose Ruins? Power, Possession, and the Landscapes of American Empire by Alicia Poglionesi. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. To make sure that I can do this book summary justice, I'm going to read you a bit of the blurb that is on this book. Popular narratives of American history conceal as much as they reveal presenting a national identity based on harvesting treasures that lay in wait for European colonization. In Whose Runes tells another story. Winding through the U.S. landscapes from Native American earthworks in West Virginia to the Manhattan Project in New Mexico, this history is a tour of sites that were mined for an empire's power, showing the hidden cost of ruthless economic growth, particularly to indigenous people, this book illuminates the myth-making intimately tied to place. From the ground up, the project of settlement, expansion, and extraction became entwined with the spiritual values of those who hoped to gain from it. Every nation tells some stories and suppresses others, in whose runes illustrates the way American myths have overwritten indigenous histories, binding us into an unsustainable future. The next book on this TBR is we had a little real estate problem, the unheralded story of Native Americans in comedy. I'm not gonna lie, the title of that book is also one that grabbed me when I was in the bookstore. It's written by comedy historian Cliff Nesteroff, and it's an account of the history of Native Americans in comedy in the US, uh, and it starts out in the late 1880s when Native Americans were forced to perform in Wild West shows as a means to get out of having to go to prison. It details the lives and works of Native American comedians that were groundbreaking in the 1970s when they first appeared on The Tonight Show. Nestroff is not indigenous himself, however, this book reportedly relies heavily uh, on source material from original interviews with Native and indigenous comedians, both past and present. There's a quote on the back of this book that sold me on this and drew me in and I wanted to read it to you. Ryan Redcorn, the Osage member of the 1941, says, quote, the American narrative dictates that Indians are supposed to be sad. It's not true, and it's not indicative of the community experience itself. Laughter and joy is very much part of Native culture. Next on this list is a biography, and that is The Flight of Redbird, The Life of Zitla Sa. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. She's a member of the Sioux Nation. And this is a biography written by Doreen Rapport. Redbird was a prominent activist and writer in the early 20th century, and is someone that I am woefully ignorant of, so I am looking forward to reading this biography. The biographer includes a lot of Redbird's original writings, her diaries, her letters, poems, speeches, and her retellings of the Sioux Nation's stories. The next book is one that will be quite heavy, uh, literally and figuratively, and that is The Earth is Weeping, the epic story of the Indian Wars for the American West by Peter Cozens. The Indian Wars that happened in the American West after the American Civil War concluded in the 1860s is an area of U.S. history that, again, I am very ignorant of. It was never brought up in my public school education, nor was it brought up in my undergrad history degree, and so I would like to start to remedy that with this book. I didn't realize until I picked it up that it is a little bit more so of a military history, 
it focuses more so on the battles and negotiations that happened during the Indian Wars. I'm not someone that generally seeks out military history, nonetheless, uh, this is one that I definitely want to give a go. The next two books are ones that you will have seen me talk about in my autumn TBR, so I will not stay on them too long. The first of them being We Are What We Eat, A Slow Food Manifesto by Alice Waters. Alice Waters is a longtime chef and food activist. The summary of this book says that it looks at the impact of fast food culture on American society, um, the social, economic, and environmental impact of the industrial farming industry, as well as the food distribution industry in the U.S. The book itself is relatively short, and I'm hoping that it will be a good jumping off point for a topic that I am personally very interested in. Again, I won't stay here too long since I already talked about this book, but the next one on the TBR is Animal Vegetable Miracle, A Year of Food Life by Barbara Kingsolver. Uh, this documents the year that Barbara Kingsolver and her family decided to give up the industrial food system and only eat what they themselves grew or was grown in their own neighborhood. And the last book on this TBR is Without You, There Is No Us, Undercover Amongst the Sons of North Korea's Elite by Suki Kim. This memoir documents Suki Kim's time uh, going undercover in North Korea and teaching English to the sons of the elite ruling class of the country. It also covers the last six months of Kim Jong-il's reign and the fallout and aftermath for her pupils after his death. Okay, so those are all of the books that I am planning on reading for nonfiction November. Let me know if you are planning on joining this readathon. If so, what books you are planning on reading in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more from me, please feel free to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can also give it a thumbs up. That apparently helps. But I hope you all are doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.